सो टुडे आर टॉपिक इज अबाउट सेंसरी असेसमेंट वॉट इज सेंसरी इंटीग्रेशन सेंसरी इंटीग्रेशन इज द अबिलिटी ऑफ द ब्रेन टू ऑर्गेनाइज इंटरप्रेट एंड यू सेंसरी इंफॉर्मेशन दिस इंटीग्रेशन प्रोवाइड्स एन इंटरनल रिप्रेजेंटेशन ऑफ द एनवायरमेंट दैन इन्फॉर्म्स एंड गाइड्स मोटर रिस्पॉन्स सोमैटो सेंसेशन और इन अदर वर्ड सोमैटो सेंसरी रेफर्स टू द सेंसेशन रिसीव फ्रॉम द स्किन एंड मस्किलो स्केलेटल सिस्टम एज अपोज टू दैट फ्रॉम स्पेशलाइज सेंसेज सच एज साइट और हियरिंग Examination of sensory function involves testing patient's ability to interpret and discriminate among incoming sensory information. Sensory examination is the most difficult and tedious part of neurological examination. It requires great concentration and cooperation from the patient and the examiner. Pattern of sensory impairment. A seminal feature of the examination involves determining the pattern that is specific boundaries of sensory involvement pattern identification is accomplished using knowledge of skin segment innervation by dorsal roots and peripheral nerves the term dermatome or skin segment refers to the skin area supplied by one dorsal root clinical note considerable variation exists in clinical presentation of sensory impairments this variability is typically associated with nervous system involved cns versus pns the type of injury pathology or disease as well as severity extent and duration of the involvement so this here is a picture of the dermatome so all the dermatomes from cervical to the coccygeal nerves and this is in an anterior view and you can see this in the posterior view when you ask the patient to carefully describe the pattern of distribution of sensory symptoms example tingling numbness dimness or absent sensation this will provide the therapist with preliminary information to help guide the examination and to assist in identifying the dermatomes and the nerve involved peripheral nerve injuries generally present sensory impairments that pa parallel the distribution of the involved nerve and correspond to its pattern of innervation For example if a patient presents with complaints of numbness on the ulnar half of the ring finger the little finger and the ulnar side of the hand the therapist would be alerted to carefully address ulnar nerve C8 and T1 integrity during the sensory examination other patterns of sensory loss may be associated with a specific pathology for example with peripheral neuropathy such as in diabetes Sensory loss is often an early symptom and presents in a glove and stocking distribution referring to typical of hands and feet. So now let's talk about the physiology of sensation. So you have two important ascending tracts in the brain. One is anterolateral spinothalamic tract and the dorsal column. So let's talk about the type of sensation in both of them. So in anterolateral spinothalamic tract it's non-discriminative. example pain temperature crude touch and pressure in dorsal column it's discriminative so stereognosis two point discrimination precise localization fine intensity gradation its degree of spatial orientation relative to origin of stimulus now regarding the afferent fibers in anterolateral spinothalamic tract they are small in diameter and they are slow conducting whereas in dorsal column they are large and rapidly conducting next we are going to talk about the origin So in anterolateral spinothalamic tract you have the skin mechanoreceptors thermoreceptors nociceptors and in dorsal column it's skin joints tendon specialized mechanoreceptors next is about the projection so in anterolateral spinothalamic tract it's from the dorsal root of the spinal nerves synapses at the dorsal horns fibers cross and move up the spinal cord through medulla pons midbrain to the ventro postero lateral nucleus of the thalamus in dorsal column it's from the dorsal roots of the spinal nerves ascend to medulla sy synapses with the dorsal column nuclei which is the nucleus gracilis and cuneatus cross to contralateral side and ascend to the thalamus then they project to the sensory cortex so this is a pathway for dorsal column and this is a pathway for spinothalamic tract again this is the orientation of all the descending tracts and the ascending tracts so you can see here the dorsal column medial lemniscal system it's a right 
uh, it's from cervical to sacral how their orientation is and even for the anterolateral system which involves lateral spinothalamic tract and the anterior spinothalamic tract here and this is here you can see somatosensory cortex the most complex processing of sensory information occurs in the somatosensory cortex which is divided into three main divisions primary somatosensory cortex secondary somatosensory cortex and posterior parietal lobe next is the picture here we can see the s1 and s2 and you can also see posterior parietal lobe the three divisions now and this is a sensory homunculus and its uh, orientation from medial to lateral of from the limbs the lower limb then the upper limb and then the face then teeth tongue gums jaw and also intra abdominal organs preliminary consideration so which involves arousal attention orientation cognition memory hearing and visual acuity classification of sensory system so there are three main classifications superficial sensation deep sensation and combined cortical sensation superficial sensation extraceptors are responsible for the superficial sensation they receive stimuli from the external environment via the skin and subcutaneous tissue extraceptors are responsible for the perception of pain temperature light touch and pressure deep sensation proprioceptors are responsible for the deep sensation these receptors receive stimuli from muscle tendon ligaments joints and fascia and are responsible for position sense and awareness of joints at rest movement awareness that is kinesthesia and vibration combined cortical sensation the combination of both superficial and deep sensory mechanism they make up the third category of combined sensation these sensation they require information from both extraceptive and proprioceptive receptors as well as intact function of cortical sensory association areas the cortical combined sensation includes stereognosis two point discrimination barognosis graphesthesia tactile localization recognition of texture and double simultaneous stimulation types of sensory receptors so you have six main types so you have first let's talk about the mechano receptors in that you have cutaneous sensory receptors under that you have five, uh, about seven subtypes which is free nerve endings hair follicle endings merkel's disc raffini endings crosses end bulbs miscellaneous corpus corpuscles and paxinian corpuscles then you have deep sensory receptors in that they are classified into muscle receptors and joint receptors so muscle receptors it will involve muscle spindle golgi tendon organs free nerve endings and paxinian corpuscles in joint receptors you have golgi type endings free nerve endings raffini endings and paxiniform endings and in thermo receptors you have cold and warmth so for cold it's cold receptors warmth you have warmth receptors for nociceptors you have a uh, pain so you it involves free nerve endings and uh, extremes of stimuli electromagnetic receptors you have for vision you have rods and cones and for chemo receptors so the first type is about taste receptors of taste buds then smell you have receptors of olfactory nerves in the olfactory epithelium you have atrial oxygen which is receptors for aortic and carotid bodies osmolality which is probability of neurons of supra optic nuclei blood carbon dioxide receptors in or on surface of the medulla and in aortic and carotid bodies blood glucose amino acids fatty acids you have receptors in the hypothalamus testing environment the sensory examination should be administered in a quite well lighted area depending on the number of body areas to be tested either a sitting or recumbent position may be used if full body testing is indicated both prone and supine positions will be required and use of a treatment table is recommended to allow the examination of each body 
equipment to perform a sensory examination the following equipment and materials are used for pain a large headed safety pin or large paper clip that has one segment bent open providing one sharp and one dull end the sharp end of the instrument should not be sharp enough to risk puncturing the skin temperature two standard laboratory test tubes with stoppers light touch uh, you can use a camel hair brush a piece of cotton or a tissue so here is a picture for pain and for temperature and for light touch vibration tuning fork and earphones if available to reduce auditory clues tuning forks are made of steel or magnesium alloy and grossly resemble a two pronged fork when the tines are struck against a surface usually the palm of examiner's hand the fork resonates at a specific pitch example 128 256 or 512 hertz determined by the length of the two u shaped prongs or tines stereognosis object recognition a variety of small common news articles such as comb fork paper clip key marble coin pencil and so forth two point dis uh, discrimination several instruments are available to measure two point discrimination a two point discrimination esthetometer is a small handheld instrument designed to measure the shortest distance that two points of contact on the skin can be distinguished so here are the pictures for vibration and for stereognosis and this is a picture for two point discrimination patient preparation a full explanation of the purpose of the testing should be provided the patient also should be informed that cooperation is necessary to obtain accurate test results it's of considerable importance that the patient should be re requested not to guess if uncertain of the correct response during the examination the patient should be in a comfortable position relaxed position preferably the test should be performed when the patient is well rested considering the high level of concentration required it is not surprising that fatigue has been noted to affect the results of some sensory tests adversely so now we are going to talk about the procedures for uh, superficial sensation so various superficial sensation like we talked about pain perception temperature awareness and all that so now we are going to talk about the procedure and the response so for pain perception it indicates a function of protective sensation to test pain awareness the sharp and dull ends of large headed safety pin a reshaped paper clip can be used the instrument should be carefully cleaned before administering the test and disposed of immediately afterward the sharp and dull ends of the instrument are randomly applied perpendicularly to the skin to maintain a uniform pressure with each successive application of stimuli the pin should be held firmly and the fingers allowed to slide down the pin once in contact with the skin response the patient is asked to verbally indicate sharp or dull when a stimulus is felt all areas of the body may be tested temperature awareness this test determines the ability to distinguish between warm and cool stimuli two test tubes with stoppers are required for the examination one is with warm water and the second is crushed ice Ideal temperatures is for cold between 41 degree Fahrenheit and 50 degree Fahrenheit and warmth is between 104 degree Fahrenheit and 113 degree Fahrenheit. The slide of the test tube should be placed in contact with the skin as opposed to only the distal end. All skin surfaces should be tested. Response the patient is asked to reply hot or cold after each stimulus application. touch awareness this test determines perception of tactile touch input a camel hair brush piece of cotton ball or swab or tissue is used the area to be tested is lightly touched or stroked response the patient is asked to indicate when he or she recognizes that a stimulus has been applied by responding yes or no pressure perception the therapist's fingertip or double tip Cotton swab is used to apply a firm pressure on the skin surface. This pressure should be firm enough to indent the skin and to stimulate the deep receptors. Response: 
The patient is asked to indicate when an applied stimulus is recognized by responding yes or no. Deep sensations. Kinesthesia awareness. This test examines awareness of movement. The extremity or the joints is moved passively through a relatively small range of motion. The therapist should identify the range of movement being examined, example initial, mid or terminal range. A trial run or demonstration of the procedure should be performed prior to actual testing. The therapist's grip should remain constant and minimal. Fingertip grip over bony prominences to reduce tactile stimulation. Response The patient is asked to describe verbally the di direction up, down, in, out and so forth and range of movement while extremity is in motion. The patient may also respond by simultaneously duplicating the movement with the contralateral extremity. Proprioceptive awareness. This test examines joint position sense and the awareness of joints at rest. The extremity or joints is moved through a range of motion and held in static position. As with kinesthesia, caution should be used with hand placements to avoid excessive tactile stimulation. Response. While the extremity or joint is held in a static position by the therapist, the patient is asked to describe the position verbally or to duplicate the position of the extremity or joint with the contralateral extremity, that is position matching. This test may be performed unilaterally using the same extremity or joint, first held in position by the examiner, then returned to the resting position followed by active duplication of the position by patient using the same limb. Vibration perception. This test requires a tuning fork that vibrates at 128 Hz. Test. Place the base of a tu vibrating tuning fork over a bony prominence such as sternum, elbow or ankle. The tuning fork base, the handle of the fork is held between the examiner's thumb and index finger without making contact with the tines. The tines are then briskly hit against the open palm of the examiner's opposite hand to indicate the vibration. The base of the fork is then placed over the bony prominence. If vibration sensation is intact, the patient will perceive the vibration. If there is impairment, the patient will be unable to distinguish between a vibrating and non-vibrating tuning fork. Therefore, there should be a random application of vibrating and non-vibrating stimuli. Response: The patient is asked to respond by verbally identifying or otherwise indicating if the stimulus is vibrating or non-vibrating each time the fork makes contact. Combined cortical sensation, stereognosis perception. This test determines the ability to recognize the form of objects by touch. A variety of small, easily obtainable and culturally familiar objects of differing size and shape are required. Example, keys, coins, combs, safety pins, pencils and so forth. A single object is placed in the hand the patient manipulates the object and then identifies the item verbally. Response. The patient is asked to name the object verbally. For patients with speech impairments, the item manipulated can be identified from a group of images presented after each test. Paragnosis. Recognition of weight. This test determines the ability to Recognize different weights. A set of discrimination uh, weights consisting of small objects of same size and shape but of graduated weight is used. Response. When the objects are placed or picked up in both hands simultaneously, the patient is asked to compare the weight of the two objects. The patient responds by indicating that the object is heavier or lighter. So here you can see the picture for stereognosis and barognosis and this is for graphesthesia and tactile localization which I'm going to talk next. Tactile localization. This test determines the ability to localize touch sensation on the skin topognosis 
the patient is asked to identify specific point of application of a touch stimulus using a cotton swab or fingertip. After each application of a stimulus, the patient is given time to respond. Response. The patient is asked to identify the location of the stimuli by pointing to the area or by verbal description. The distance between the application of the stimulus and the site indicated by the patient can be measured and recorded. Graphesthesia. Traced figure identification. This test determines the ability to recognize letters, numbers or designs written on the skin. Using a fingertip or pencil, a series of letters, numbers or shapes is traced on the palm of the patient's hand. Response: The patient is asked to identify verbally the figures drawn on the skin. For patients with speech or language impairments, the figures can be selected or pointed to from a series of line drawings. Two point discrimination. The, it is the ability to perceive two points applied to the skin simultaneously. It's a measure of the smallest distance between two stimuli applied simultaneously and with equal pressure that can still be perceived as two distinct stimuli. As this sensory function is most refined in the distal upper extremities, this is a typical site of testing. The esthetiometer and the circular two point discriminator most common devices which are used for the measurement. Test procedure. The two tips of the instrument are applied to the skin simultaneously with tips spread apart. To increase the validity of the test, alternate application of the two stimuli with the random application of only a single stimulus. With each successive application, the two tips are gradually brought closer together until the stimuli are perceived as one. The smallest distance between the stimuli that is still perceived as two distinct points is measured. Response. The patient is asked to identify the perception of one or two stimuli. Thank you.